Today's video, I'm going to be showing you UX controls with mixed reality. So this is going to be part of the MRTK tutorials. We're going to be covering how to set up a button, how to add near interaction versus far interaction, how we can change the theme depending on the selection of the button. I'm also going to show you what's called a bound control that is going to allow you to basically have handles on different objects so you can do transformation, meaning that we can move it around, we can scale it if we wanted to, and basically add different constraints that are going to make our experiences a lot better. I also want to show you how we can add an object manipulator and lastly I'm going to show you how we can use the toolbox which is available in the mixed reality toolkit to basically drag and draw components into unity so let's jump into it and start working on it to get going I'm gonna right click in here I'm gonna be creating a custom button so it's gonna be this one is gonna call it the simple button and it's gonna be just a cube for now you can do obviously you can do more cooler things than this and I'm gonna do 0.1 0.1 0.1 and then on the position, I'm just going to do 0.8. That way we can see it right in there. And then I'll just go ahead and, go ahead and change the X, probably something like that. And I think that, that works. Let's go ahead and swap change to the same view so we can see everything better. And then I'll just go, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go into my materials folder. And I have a, basically a simple mixed reality toolkit, a standard material, which you can create by you know, creating a new material and then selecting a standard. I'm going to drag and drop it. This one already selected like the color and then I'm going to go ahead and assign it to it. And I'm also going to add a pressable button that's going to be, you know, what is going to allow us to do near interactions. And it's going to tell you that you need to add a near interaction touchable component, which we're going to say yes to. And then you can also change the moving button visuals. Let's say that you had another component inside, which, which is the one that you want to press. You can change, you know, which game object to select. I'm just going to do this same game object since it's going to be the one that we're going to be pressing. Okay. And if you look at it, it's going to have a lot of properties in here, the press settings. You can change the start push distance, the max, the press distance, return speed. And then I'll show you some of those components. But if you go down here, it, this added a near interaction touchable because we told it to, and also a touchable collider. It also has, like if I go close, a little closer to it, there's also some handles that will show if we enable a property in here. So make planes editable. And you want to do that because we want to be able to change those planes and those boundaries basically through the editor. But it's not going to show correctly until you fix the bounds and you fix the center. Once you do that, you're going to see that now we have different planes in here. Anyway, so that's going to be some of those. So if I were to hit play right now, you're going to see that right now we should be able to do near interaction. So if I go far, Nothing is going to happen from far, but if I get closer to it, you're going to see there's a push that is actually getting executed. So that's what some of these properties are. The other things that I wanted to show you here is going to be some of the events that we're going to have. And these events are going to be only for near interactions, but I'm going to show you how we can bound, how we can send some of those events to what's called an interactable, which is going to allow us to do far interactions and near interactions and also route some of these events to the interactable. So hopefully it makes sense once I get things going. So now that we have those assigned, let's go ahead and add another component, which is going to be the interactable component. And this is what's going to allow us to do far interactions, right? And it's going to tell you here, okay, you need to assign the target. I'm just going to do assign self. And then I'll come back to this. I just want to do a couple more configuration. Now we need to do what's called, it's basically going to be called a physical press event router. This is going to be needed because we need to route the basically the, the events that are happening on the near interaction to the interactable, which is going to allow us to do far interaction. That's when we use the physical press event router to route some of those events that are happening when we're touching an event. So they're going to be routed to the interactable, interactable is going to get them, and they're going to be handling some of the events in there. So let's go ahead and do and change this to event on press. This is when this is going to be triggered. And then what I'm going to do is this is going to tell me which interactable while well, the interactable is in the same object. So I'm just going to assign that to it. And then I normally like to move these up so that we have, you know, our pressable bond here or our physical press event router here and then our interactable here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be adding an event and these events are going to be the receivers, right? So when we interact with this object, what receivers we're going to, we're going to be handling? We're going to be doing the press receiver, which is going to allow us when we actually touch it, uh, it's basically going to send us events. And I'm also going to be adding another receiver. So if we go down here and that one is going to be the touch receiver. So on the press receiver, we're going to be basically telling the, the Bulgaria that there's an event that got executed. So let me go ahead and do this pretty quick. And then I'm also going to be doing the same thing here. 
And I'll do one so that you know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into my logger, assign the logger to this. And then in the logger, I'll just do log info, and this is going to be on press event. And then I'll just go ahead and do the other ones. And one thing to know that near and far, you can basically tell it when this is going to happen, if it's going to happen near or on far, far interaction, when the press happens. Well, we want to use a ray, and we also want to touch the object, so that's why I'm using both in here. So now that we have those assigns, we need to actually do a couple of things in here in the pressable button. So the touch begin, touch in, button press, we need to route all that. So we need to go ahead and route that information. And how we do that, we're going to be adding the simple button to all four of those. And we're going to be associating a couple of methods that we have on the physical event router. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my press, my physical press event router here. And we're going to be assigning the touch to the touch. We're going to go in here and we're going to do the same thing. This is going to be on touch. So, and then when we do the button press, we're also going to be assigning that one as well. So we're going to be doing on press trigger and they have a little bit different names. So hopefully it doesn't really get confusing, but they should be pretty easy. So make sure that you associate them like that. So the last thing that we need to do here to be able to get the bound to work correctly, we need to assign a new theme and I already have one, but you can actually create a new one. So let me create a new one. We're going to tell it which folder we want to place the theme on. And this one is the one that I already had. And I'll just go ahead and do two so that we can walk through the process. If we double click on it, you're going to see that by default, this is actually, it's not doing anything, right? It's just, it's just basically have the properties that we're going to be tracking. But if we want to change the, the look and feel of this, we can go ahead and, so if you go here and change this to a scale color offset, now it's going to give you different, you know, different properties. And what I'm going to do is on this one, I want to, so the default, it's going to be the color that I have right now. So it's going to go ahead and, and select that as a color. The focus, I'm going to be using that similar color, but I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter in this case, so that we know that we're focusing on it. Press, I wanted to make it very drastic. So I'm just going to do red and then disable, we can just leave it at white. So if we go back to a simple button and we hit play, you're going to see that now the, the, cube should be changing colors depending on the state. So now it's a lighter color, right? Now when I press it, you can see that it's red. And then disable, we don't really have it right now, but I can also touch it and the events are going to are gonna trigger. We're going to see the debug area happening. So, so another cool thing that we can also do is we can use the toolbox. So if you go to Mixed Reality Toolkit Toolbox, then you can, you know, you, you're going to get something like this. And then I just basically put it right here. But you have a lot of different options in here that you can drag and drop. So if I wanted to say, well, you can't really drag and drop, but you can select it. Say that I wanted to add a button like this, I could. If you wanted to add perhaps another one, we can. I'm going to drag it and drop them in here and then place them in the view. And I really like to do larger buttons. I think something like that works. And so we can put this one right here. And what you can really do is you can change. Obviously, you're going to have all different methods, uh, components that I added to the other button that we created from scratch. And you can obviously change here the label. So if I wanted, for instance, on this one to have one label, we can say, you know, test. On this other one, we can enable the label as well. Actually, this one already has a label. We can do test two. You can also change it if you wanted to say, you know, say test, you can change that, say test two, or basically what you will, will tell Cortana to basically to activate this button. And you can do that. You can also change the, the icons. If you wanted to change the icon to be a hand on that one, maybe this one is just a dialog icon. You can do that as well. These two are a little bit different because they're HoloLens pressable buttons, HoloLens 2 pressable buttons versus this one, which is just a pressable button. The HoloLens 2 has just different additional properties. So if I go into this component, you're going to see that you have additional properties here, moving button icon text compressible bound visuals, and then, you know, some options that are available only in HoloLens 2. So if you wanted to just develop for that, you can just add, you know, add that component instead of the generic one that I just added. So that's going to be those two. The, the other one that we can also, that we can also add and that I wanted to show you. So if you go into the project and you go all the way down to the common mixed reality toolkit examples and then prefabs, there's also a button in here that you can add, which is called the pressable ram button and this one is another custom one that unity the unity mrtk team created and we can also do maybe you know point a there we can probably do two two here and we can just do i think 18.5 is fine let's, let's go ahead and do two and then we'll just move it right here 
So this is going to be another example of a custom button that you know is also available for you in there if you wanted to if you wanted to implement it. Let me do 2.5 just to make it more like an arcade uh, type button. So that's going to be you know another one. The other ones that I recommend that you look at that are not going to be listed in MRTK toolbox is if you go into the Mixed Reality Toolkit Foundation and then SDK and expand features. This is something that I just couldn't find before and I'm glad that I found. And then go into UX, Interactable, and then Prefabs. These are going to be a lot of different buttons and that, are going to, that you're going to have available for you in addition to what we have in here. So if you wanted to add perhaps one that doesn't have a label, we can also make this a little bigger so you can see what they are. And some of them just don't, don't show correctly. Let's go ahead and go back. But if you wanted to add, for instance, one where we want to do a canvas. So let's say that we wanted to do a canvas type button in here. So what we'll do is you're going to go ahead and right click in here and then go into add a canvas. It's going to tell you here to convert the M these to an MRTK canvas. And it's important to do that otherwise your MRTK button is not going to work. So go ahead and do that. And it's going to tell you to add a near interaction touchable Unity UI. So do that as well. And now that we do that, it's going to basically we can add the MRTK buttons to it. This needs to be 0.001 because we're, we're dealing with, you know, meters. So otherwise it's going to be, it's going to be giant. Okay. So now that we have that, I think we can just change this to zero, zero. There we go. So now we should have it in view. The width and the height is the ones that you want to modify. Okay. So now we should have, I, I don't want to make it giant because if you do, it's going to cast a lot of issues and it's going to block your, your ray cast. So make sure that you do, do it the way that I'm doing it. And I'm going to place it right here. So I'm going to have a mini canvas here that is going to be holding a couple of buttons. Let's do perhaps 300 by 300. That way we can fit two different buttons. So 0.001 on the scale and then, you know, make sure that you change this to 00, zero and then you can adjust it where you want it. Okay, so you have a pressable button UI, Unity UI, so we can drag it and drop it in here. You're going to see that it's going to show in there. And this is going to be all more driven towards the canvas events. And you can see that by looking at these components, a canvas render, a rec transform, and so on. So, so what I'll do here is I think I want to make, let's go ahead and make it 100. I'm just going to make a larger button. And then I'll just go ahead and put it right here. We can also change the, I think if I go inside, you can change the text. And I think I want this to be maybe 15. There we go. And you can also change, obviously, it's going to be, we can just do hello world, something like that, so that we can see some text. So it's going to be, uh, you know, all driven by, by the canvas. And then obviously you can change those, the text that is inside. And I'm just going to leave it like that. I think, I think that's sufficient. And then I'll just add one that is going to be circular. And I'll do the same thing. Like if I look at, I'll just copy the transform here, go into this component, and then paste, paste transform values. That way we, we have everything sized correctly. And that doesn't copy the properties of the, of the children. So we'll just change this one to be what we did here, which was 15. So we'll just do, we'll just do 15 here. And this is going to be, I don't know, hello world too. Or we can just do hello world in there as well. It doesn't matter. And then say it, obviously, like I was saying, you can change this as well. Let's go ahead and change it so that it, so that it looks better because I think it's just too small. So if you do that, it's going to change everything. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and leave it as it is. But just know that those two buttons are going to be driven by a canvas. So now if we go we go into the game view and we look at it and let's go ahead and hit play. So now you're going to see that we have a lot of different buttons in here, right? I can go and use my arrows to move around. I can do, you know, obviously close interaction in here and I can select them and I can select that one as well. They don't do anything right now because I didn't bound any of the methods, but what you can do, let's say that on this one and this one, we wanted to, you know, bind some of the, some of the events you can do, you can do that as well. Let's actually on this one, we can just do on click and see, and see how that behaves. Then what I'll do for this one, I'll just associate it, associate the logger. And then log and log info. It's gonna be on click. But obviously, I can add a receiver just like I did at the beginning of the video with this button. So if we go ahead and do that and hit play, now you're gonna see that we can interact with this one. This is on click, on click, and this one should also be reacting to on click. But the on release and the press, those are things that you can also you know you can also bind to. If I were to go ahead and and do an on press, I don't think it's going to trigger. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, actually it triggers the on click every time, 
but you don't have the granularity of saying, okay, on press release versus on press. So if you just want it one more generic, you can use the on click. But if you wanted to use more of a detailed receiver, you can go in here and associate the, you know, either the press or the touch and then just capture the, you know, where you're starting the receiver uh, event versus releasing, you know, releasing the event. On this one, on the roundable, we can do, we can do that. So I'm go ahead and go back in here. And we already have the, the on press receiver because the MRTK team already did that. So if we wanted to bound to that, we can do, we can do that as well, right? We got the logger and then it's going to show, it's going to show that. I'm not going to do it. I already did it on the other one. So just know that you can, you can also do that as well. The canvas ones are the ones that I do want to do just so that I can show you. We can also do the on click or you can go into the bound press, bound press release, and you can, you know, you can select, let's actually do the bound press and then see, let me actually do the same thing on both of them. Let me undo that. I'm going to select both of them. And then I think, yeah, I have, I have the same on both of them. We're just going to head and drag in this, drag and drop it, go into my logger. And it's going to be on press on UI button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new event on the interactable object for both of these. Let's go ahead and select both of them. And then I'm just going to add a new event. As, as soon as you add a new event, it's going to basically clone the properties from the other one. Let's go ahead and do the untouch receiver. And then yeah, we can just press the button press. And then this is something that we can just change. We can just say untouch. It's just trying to be smart and then clone some of the properties that we did here. So we should now have untouch on both of them. So now if I were to go ahead and, you know, touch it, you're going to see that the untouch event is getting executed. Let me go ahead and move a little bit to the left. So we're touching, we're touching, and we can do the same thing on this one. It also is going to respond to my far interactions. So, so everything is working, right? The last thing that I want to show you is we're going to be adding a new component, which is going to be the bound control. And to do that, I'm going to be stealing the coffee cup from the Mixed Reality Toolkit examples, prefabs, and I'm going to be adding a coffee cup in here. And as soon as I do that, it's just going to be adding the it's going to be, there we go. It's going to be offset a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it here. And I'm just going to do, I think this is just too large. Let's do 0 0.07. I think seven is what I did before. So we'll just do something like that. And then once we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and remove what it already has. Remove that. I'm going to actually unpack this completely because I'm going to be creating my own components. And we can probably do something like that. This is going to be, this is going to need to be a 0.8. That way we can have it right around the same distance as the other components and something like that I think works. I can go to auto graphic view so that I can align it perfectly. There we go. And then obviously uh, this is a little bit offset. And we can probably do something like that. There we go. Okay, so I think this is good to go. Let's go ahead and get out of ISO. And I think that's perfect. So what I'm going to do here, let's go ahead and remove this capsule collider. So we're going to make this object basically that we can manipulate it. We can transform it, meaning we scale it, we move it around. We also change the, you know, the rotation. So what I'll do, let's go ahead and resize this. I'm going to be adding a collider here. So it's going to be a box collider. And I'm going to show you why that is. I'm going to copy this. Uh, let me undo that. Copy this. And I'm going to paste it on this original one. That way it has the, the right size, otherwise it won't have the right size. Then I'll go here and then just paste component as new. And then we can remove this. It's just a trick that I learned. There's many ways that you can do that. That's one way. And then what I'll do here is we're going to look at the bound controls. So if I select that, you, you won't see the bounds just yet, but once we hit play, you're going to be able to see it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and change a couple of things. So the target object on these bounds is going to be the coffee cup, the one that has the mesh. And I think if you do this one, it's still going to work. I just been selecting that one. I'm going to be activating the bounds only when there's a pointer on them. Otherwise, it's just going to be activated by default. And then another thing that I'm going to do is we can also add some smooth, smoothing. So when we scale it, we can smooth it a little bit. And also on the rotation, it doesn't look too, you know, as we're having drastic changes. And then the other thing that I can do, let me go ahead and hit play. And we can see how it's looking. So you get an idea how it's going to work. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. Let's go ahead and go back in here. And you're going to see that as soon as we do that, it's, it's going to give us, you know, we can, we can basically change the, the scale. We can also, you know, obviously rotate it. And it's a smooth because we enable the smooth, the smooth option. 
but I can now move it around. So let me add another component. And I'm going to go ahead and select this. And then a component, it's going to be the object manipulator. And this one's really cool because it's going to allow us to move it around. I'm also going to be adding near interaction so that we can, you know, we can interact with that object. Now, if we hit play, you're going to see that it's not only going to allow us to transform, you know, change the scale and also the rotation, but I can also move it around. So we have, you know, complete flexibility of what we can do with this object. Obviously, we, we want to make, you know, add some constraints because we don't want to make it that small. So I'm going to show you how, that, how to do that as well. So if we go back into here, I'm going to go ahead and select that so that it goes, so basically, we can collapse it. On the bound control, I'm going to be adding a constraint. I'm going to say manual constraint selection. And the constraint that I'm going to be adding, it's going to be the minimum and max scale constraint. So once you do that, it's going to add this script. And it's going to have a 20%, which is going to be the minimum of the original size, and also double the size of the original size. And then if you want to make it in initial, you know, relative to the initial state, which, which we're going to be making. And also, you know, a couple more options if you wanted to do hand type and then proximity type. I'm just going to leave it as default. The, the other one that you can also, I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to add in. You can also add constraints on rotation, on you know, how far you want to move this object. Basically, if you want to constrain it on the Y axis, this is what's going to allow you to do that. So if you go here, you're going to see that now we can constrain it you know, only to move it on a specific. So if you, want, if you don't want to allow the Y axis, you can select that. And I'm just going to say nothing. Just know that it's going to allow us to move in any, you know, in any axis, but you can do that as well. So now if I hit play, you're going to see that now we shouldn't be able to scale it, you know, you know, beyond the, the constraints that we give it. So if I go here, this is double the size, but I can't really go further. And then I can't really make it, you know, smaller than, than the 20% of the original size. So, so it's really cool. The other thing that I want to do, let's go ahead and go back here. And I'm going to change the, the, smooth, the, the smooth because I, I just, it just feels weird when, when I do that. So let's go ahead and go back here. So I'm going to go ahead and move around. And now it's just going to be snappy, right? So I do, it just feels better. But if you want to add smoothing, you know, depending on your experience, you can do that. I just, I'm just so used to doing that. If I want to do the other hand, I should be able to do that. Also move it around. Let me change, let me show you the constraint on the, on the moving. So if I want to just constrain on the Y axis, I can do that and hit play. And then I'll just go ahead and go here. And now if I wanted to, if I wanted to, basically, I cannot move it on the Y axis because I, I'm telling it not to allow it. But I can go you know, on the Z axis and also the X axis. So that's how that works. It's pretty simple to set up. And it's, it's actually pretty, pretty helpful. I can see so many use cases for that. The, the other thing that we can also do here on, on these, obviously, we can capture some of the events and then send them to a logger or any other thing that you wanted to do. You can also change it here, like if I wanted to, I wanted to activate it on star. We can also activate it on star. And what I'm going to do, so we can see these right off the bat, I'm just going to ahead and move it here to the center. And I think that's too close to the camera. Let me go ahead and get maybe right about here. You can see the handles are, are visible without me even having to have my pointer over them. So that, that's what this option is. I like to do the pointer. I think it makes the most sense. And if you wanted to flat, flatten the axis, you can do that as well. It'll allow you to select which one you can do. A smoothing options you can also do. If I wanted to change the, the link configuration, the wireframe, if I, if I don't want to show a wireframe, you can do that. So if I hit play, you're going to see that a wireframe is not going to be visible anymore. So, you know, and, and that just really depends on how you want to, you know, how you want to have your, your experience. In my case, I do like the wireframe, so I'm going to go back here and then show the wireframes. And other things that you can also change, let's say that you wanted to add a material to the box, because there's a box that actually gets assigned. So we can do, we can do maybe, maybe this one, and then hit play. You're going to see how that looks. It's going to show you basically a box around it. Obviously, you can do add some transparency if you wanted to, to see the cup. But I don't want to use that, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. You can add other properties in here on the box grab material, which gives you more flexibility. Some of these ones are really cool. Like for instance, if I wanted to change the scale handles, I can change those to be, maybe the scale handles are going to be that color. And then obviously some other settings in here that you can do as well. Rotation, let's do perhaps yellow on the rotation. And you can also use the scriptable object to do that and have different themes 
And also the translation, if you wanted to change that as well. We can do perhaps either a white, we can do maybe this blue here. And now we have, you know, just basically a different theme on, on how we want the, some of those to, to look like. The other thing that you can also change in here that I haven't really used that much is the proximity configuration. It basically gives you the option to, to have a different icon when you're basically close to a handle. So you can change that as well. And if I enable it, you're going to see that it's going to show you as soon as you're close to the handle, it's going to give you kind of like a, a little indicator. So if I go back in here, you're going to see that the indicator, it, it shows when you're close to it. But that's basically everything that I wanted to show you as far as like what, what is available. So we cover buttons and also the toolbox and a custom button and also some of the buttons available in the to use to the canvas and also the object manipulator and bound control. So that's everything that I'm going to do for today. And then in the next video, I think I'm going to be covering more UX controls that you guys you know can get familiar with. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, guys.